Hello, this is a video tutorial on how to use the National Phonology Network's data visualization tool for phonology data that is collected by citizen scientists. And citizen scientist data that has been entered in the National Phonology Network's database. So the first thing you do is type www.usanpn.org to navigate to their home site. You then click the visualization tools found on the home site and click here to access visualizations. They have tutorials themselves some good stuff to help you figure this out but my tutorial is a little bit more specific in the way that I want to compare lilac phonology data in the Intermountain West between two sites and I'm going to show you how to do that and then how to overlay some prism or climate data on top of those two sites to be able to kind of compare different climates that these two sites may have. So here we are in the visualization tool. You can see that we have this filter species by group or by partner. This helps us select the species that we want. Um, we have this climate data um, kind of portal here where we can overlay climate data on top of the map which is pretty cool and then we have this legend that tells us about what how much data has been collected uh, by state so for the common lilac here we go common lilac I'm s selecting species by their common name you could also do that for a scientific name I'm clicking it then I'm adding to the list then I'm mapping it So, as I move in, oh, waiting. So, here's all the data across the United States that citizen scientists have collected for the common lilac. I'm interested in the Intermountain West, so I'm zooming into the Intermountain West here. And I'm going to show you how to compare two different sites this Greenway site here near Spokane and this Pioneer Creek site in the mountains of Idaho. So you could do this between different schools or um, different areas across the U.S. if you wanted. For IceNet, I thought comparing two different schools would be interesting, or just comparing, or not comparing, but just analyzing your data for school um, would be great. So to do this, I then can click this Greenway point, and here I get a new window where I can then go to 2011 and 2009 and 8 or 10 no data was collected at the site so 2011 common lilac I'm adding the fetal phase for the species and here we see the data so we're visualizing the data that these the citizen collected we can see that on April 7th all leaf buds broken uh, data was collected on that and breaking leaf buds um, was happening and none of these other phenophases were occurring at that day on that day open flowers didn't start to occur till 511 so may 11th and then the end of flowering is occurring almost into august um, so july 31st So then to compare this Greenway site in Spokane to another site, I'm just going to add kind of a placeholder here in this other area, so add phenophase by species. But then they give you this change location option, and so I'm going to select that. And wait. So this gives me all these different locations I could select from. Um, you could select multiple locations too if you wanted to compare like Washington versus Oregon. But I just want Pioneer Creek. Here we go. Add that to the list. And then I see the Pioneer Creek data. So here we can see that they went out 
starting in March of 24th, or actually starting here March 14th to try to collect data, and none of these phenophases were occurring until April 20th. Um, so we're getting breaking leaf buds happening later in the year than there in Spokane. Full flowering is happening later in the year. End of flowering is happening later in the year and ending later in the year. So here this visualization tool we can use to compare two different sites. We can then also use this prism data, this climate data, um, and map max temperatures, min temperatures, and precipitation over the US and we can do 30 year normals or yearly data or monthly data. So because uh, lilac bloom dates have been correlated with springtime temperatures, I'll just map the April data max temperature um, and then make that climate data visible by that checkbox. So we can see the difference between the two sites now. Um, it looks like this Greenway station is more in the yellow, the white and yellow area, so max temperatures between 60 and 77 degrees in April versus the Pioneer Creek maybe more in this green, green yellow area, so 50 to 68. If you do the same for min temperatures, you can start to see also that this Greenway site has higher minimum temperatures than the Pioneer Creek area. So there's quite a few questions you could ask high school science students regarding phenology and how climate affects that phenology and then also microclimates, how different microclimates affect phenology across the Intermountain West. Hopefully this gives us a little background understanding of how to use these visualization tools to uh, compare phenology data between two sites.